Welcome back everybody. In the last lesson, we installed Karate and ran the sample test that came with the installation to make sure the installation was successful. In this lesson, we are going to look at all the files and directories that were created as part of the installation and also how a Karate project is structured and organized. In the last lesson, we created our Karate project by running this arch type generate goal command. You can see that the project's root folder, this name was based on the value of this artifact ID that is learn karate. You can also see that it created this project structure and this project structure was created because we used karate arch type as the arch type generate goal. Archetype is a quick way to set up a Maven project such that it is consistent with the project's best practices. For instance, a standard Maven project for a Java application is typically created with a different archetype called as Maven Archetype Quick Start. And this creates two parallel folder structure src slash main slash Java, where you would write your main Java application code and src slash test slash java where you will write your test code with karate's arch type it only created src slash test slash java and that is because that's all we want we only have the test code as part of the test suite there is no java application code so there is no need for slash src slash main slash java structure even if you don't create your project using karate arch type, try to align your project structure as shown here. Not only will you be able to follow along in this tutorial, but uh, you will also adhere to karate's project standards. Now we will look at uh, the individual files and folders. Let's first start with pom.xml. pom.xml, this XML file contains information about the project and configuration details used by Maven to build the project. As you can see, there are three to four main sections here. Uh, the properties, uh, the dependencies, test resources, and uh, the plugins. <coughs> First, the properties. The properties section primarily lists the versions of the plugins, Java, and the dependencies used in this project. And it, as, it assigns these versions to specific variables and then you can use these variables at appropriate places. For instance, it says we are using karate version 1.2.0 assigns this to this variable karate.version and then we can use this variable at appropriate place. For instance, in the dependencies, we are saying we are using that variable karate-version. So property section is pretty easy and self-explanatory. Next, we have the dependencies section. Uh, there is only one dependency to run the karate test and that is com.intuit.karate. This brings all the jars that are needed to run your karate test. And as you can see, it is scoped at the test phase. Uh, next, we have is a test resource under build section. This tells Java that the test resources can be found here at src slash test slash Java. Test resources are any non-Java files like .json or .txt that you might need for your project. In, typically in a Maven project, they are located under src test resources. But with Karate, it is a good practice to keep both Java files as well as non-Java files under src slash test slash java and essentially what we are saying here is excluding the java files that is any non-java file also you can find it at this location next we have the plugins plugins are an important component of maven framework and are used to perform specific goals here we are using two plugins maven compiler plugin and maven surefire plugin uh, the Maven compiler plugin compiles a source code of the test Java files during the test compile phase. In our case, we don't have any Java files in this example so far. 
the java files that you see here these are the test runner files these are not the java files that we write uh, typically you wouldn't even need to write any java files just for api testing but as we would see further down this tutorial uh, we would need in some cases where we need to do more than api testing we would need to write our own java files and that is when this compiler will come come handy but for now in this example where there is no uh, java file we could even do away with this plugin and still be able to run the test for example let me just remove this plugin and go back to my terminal and just run mvn test e test equal to examples and i guess it is test if i run this i should still be able to run my test because there were no java files to be compiled in the first place there you go two tests were run and uh, both of them passed uh, let me undo this and yeah the next plugin that we have is the maven surefire plugin this allows you to run junit tests from the command line so the command that we were able to run all this while that was because of this plugin so if i remove this plugin and save the pom.xml and if i try to run the same command again it should fail so there you go however you should still be able to run this test from your ide if you have the right uh, extensions installed so let me go to debug console and try to run this again so you see the tests have started running and two tests were run and both of them passed that is because i've run this from ide and not from the uh, command line so even if the surefire plugin isn't there you're still able to run it from uh, uh, the ide uh, let me undo the change again and let me go and show you in the extensions uh java this extension pack for java is what i have uh, for me to be able to uh, run uh, java test from uh, vs code coming back to our structure the next folder that we are the next file that we are going to look at is uh, logback test.xml logpack is one of the most widely used logging framework in the java community it's a replacement for its predecessor log4j karate uses logpack and it looks for a file called as logpack-test.xml on the class path if you used the tweak that we discussed earlier for uh, the test resources uh, it would set src slash test slash java as the class path so in case of logback it would try and look for logback dash text dot xml at this location src slash test dot java because that is uh, our class path and in this case we are able to find uh, this file so garate should be able to log things properly uh, what you can what you see here is it says uh, it is logging at two locations standard out and file the file is located at this location target folder slash karate.log as the file name this is the logging format and another important thing you can see here is the log level let's say if we change this log level to info uh, we should still be able to run the test but now you will see less of the logs because we have uh, changed the log level to info instead of uh, debug so as you can see here both two tests pass and both of them pass but there were fewer logs printed at this time let me also undo this change uh, the next file that we are going to look at is karate-config.js uh, we will be coming back to this file multiple times in this tutorial for now remember that on startup karate expects a file uh, karate-config.js to exist on the class path that is src uh, test java and we have it at the right location uh, it also expects this file to contain a javascript function and uh, it also expects to return a json object uh, we are returning a config object here 
such that uh, and that the key key value pair from this uh, JSON object is made available as script variables for it in our uh, karate tests. The next folder that we are going to look at is the target folder. Target folder contains uh, quite a few things. Uh, uh, one one of the things it contains is the test classes. That is the dot class uh, 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 files for your Java files. That is the runner files. It contains uh, the karate logs that we just saw. So in addition to uh, your terminal logs, you could also uh, choose to print the logs in a file so that you could come and visit it later. Uh, one of the important things that you see here in the target folder are karate dash reports. Uh, let me go to uh, this folder on my file explorer and let me go inside karate dash reports and let me for instance run this karate dash summary. So as you can see, uh, it ran this uh, feature file and this provides this nice report of the test that ran. So it says two tests uh, were run and both of them passed. That's why you see both of them in green. Uh, we will come back uh, to Karate reports uh, subsequently in, in our tutorials. Uh, coming back to this folder, uh, Karate dash report contains uh, the latest reports. All the older reports gets, gets moved to uh, the folder of this type, Karate dash report underscore uh, this date time format. Right, so the karate dash reports will only have uh, the reports from your last run. So that's all about uh, the reports folder. And finally, uh, to the main part, a place where you would spend most of your time that is writing tests, uh, you would want to create a Java package for each service that you would want to test and have a runner file for that service. In this case, Consider examples to be one of the service name that you want to test, right? For in, in your case, um, it could be a profiling service, it could be a booking service, um, or any other service, right? Uh, so we, we have a service called, let's say, uh, called as example, and we create a folder with that name, a Java package with that name, and we have this test runner file inside that uh, service uh, package, right? So you see the package as examples and you have a runner file. Uh, what this runner file does is runner file will recursively find and run tests present in dot feature file. So at this level, there is no dot feature file, but uh, because it does recursively, it will also go and look inside any other folder inside uh, this folder. Uh, so it will find this users folder and inside users folder, you have this users dot feature. So the runner file will go and find this feature file and run this. And all the tests that you have been seeing all this while, it has been running these two tests. Uh, each scenario is a test. So these were the two tests that it was running all this while. Uh, you could choose to have feature file at this level, at the examples level, uh, at the service level itself, or as in this case, you can decide to decompose the service into multiple components. In this case, users is one of the components of this service and they have chosen to keep feature file at the component level rather than at the service level but you know nothing prevents so you can for instance you can just move this into uh, at the examples level and run the same script it should still run there you go let me revert this back to its original state and the final file here is users runner.java it is uh, the same as example test.java. It is a runner file. It is just that it gives you more granularity uh, because you can choose to, for instance, let me instead of examples.test, let me just run it as users runner file and it should give me the same output. There you go. But the, the benefit I have here is I can choose to run a specific function inside this runner. In this case, I only have one function. So that is the only function that will run, but you get the idea. So if I just run uh, users, users runners, uh, hash test users, it will run only that particular function. So that is the benefit we have with, uh, um, the, the, it provides us more control over how we want to run our tests.
So that is it. That is all you need to know about Karate's project structure. You are now ready to dirty your hands with the actual test. I'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you.